Greetings. Thank you for your time to watch this course. My name is Elena Preda, and I'm an assistant professor at the Bucharest University of Economic Studies, Faculty of Agri-Food and Environmental Economics, lecturing about the topics of the concept of sustainability and the role of food in sustainable development. Today, we will talk about defining sustainable food business. This topic is important due to the increased awareness to deliver food security and nutrition for all in such a way that the economic, social and environmental basis to generate food security for future generations are not compromised. Going to the next slide. The agenda for today can be seen here focusing on the concept of sustainability the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the role of food in sustainable development, taking part in sustainable development, using international databases for articles in getting to know the concept of sustainable food business. Going to the next slide. Preamble. As the world is getting warmer, droughts are intensifying leading to food insecurity, malnutrition, starvation and widespread famine. It is widely recognized that there is a need to transform the food system and to improve food security in vulnerable and conflict-prone regions. Shaping a new sustainable food business model could be helpful both at local and at global level. Going to the next slide. Subchapter 1.1 The Concept of Sustainability Sustainability focuses on meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Investors can be wary of companies that commit to sustainability. Although the optics can be beneficial to share price, investors worry about companies being transparent with their earning results. Big brands often make pledges to sustainability, but it often takes a long time to achieve sustainability goals. Going to the next slide. What is sustainable development? According to the UN World Commission on Environment and Development, sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainable development requires an integrated approach that takes into consideration environmental concerns along with economic development. Going to the next slide. What is sustainability? According to UCLA Sustainability Committee, it is defined as the integration of environmental health, social equity and economic vitality in order to create thriving, healthy, diverse and resilient communities for this generation and generations to come. The practice of sustainability recognizes how these issues are interconnected and requires a system approach and an acknowledgement of complexity. Also, according to US APA, sustainability is based on a simple principle. Everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. To pursue sustainability is to create and maintain the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony to support present and future generations. Going to the next slide. Sustainability principles in decisions and actions. First, conserve, protect, restore and improve the supply and quality of natural resources and environmental media, energy, water, materials, ecosystems, land and air over the long term. Second, align and integrate programs, tools, incentives and indicators to achieve as many positive outcomes as possible in environmental, economic and social systems. Third, consider the full life cycles of multiple natural resources, processes and polluants in order to prevent pollution, reduce waste and create a sustainable future. Going to the next slide. Subchapter 1.2 The 17 Sustainable Development Goals 
In 2015, at a meeting of the UN General Assembly in New York, was adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Through its 17 Sustainable Development Goals, this document seeks to achieve a better future not only for us, but also for our children. It was built on the three pillars of sustainable development, economic, social and environmental. The National Sustainable Development Strategy is the lighthouse that is guiding the implementation of the 2030 Agenda in all sectoral policies able to promote sustainable development at the national level. Going to the next slide. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals are No Poverty Zero Hunger Good Health and Well-Being Quality Education Gender Equality Clean Water and Sanitation Affordable and Clean Energy Decent Work and Economic Growth Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure Reduced Inequalities Sustainable Cities and Communities Responsible Consumption and Production Climate Action Life Below Water Life on Land Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions Partnerships for the Goals Going to the next slide The 17 Sustainable Development Goals integrate economic, social and ecological aspects the goals related to biosphere are life on land, life below water, clean water and sanitation, climate actions. The goals related to society are no poverty, sustainable cities and communities, peace, justice and strong institutions, affordable and clean energy, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, zero hunger. The goals related to economy are decent world and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, responsible consumption and production. The economies and societies are embedded parts of the biosphere. Going to the next slide. Change our paradigm for development. The current sectorial approach, where social, economic and ecological development are seen as separate parts, has to be replaced with an integrated approach. The economy serves society so that it evolves within the safe operating space of the planet. All the sustainable development goals are directly or indirectly connected to sustainable and healthy food. However, it can be put forward that goals on eradicating poverty and zero hunger, gender equality, decent jobs and reduced inequality. Going to the next slide. Romania, alongside 192 other UN member states, has accepted the need to establish a national framework for implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, its set of Sustainable Development Goals and the Addis Abeba Action Agenda, which presents the means of implementation of the 2030 Agenda. The 2030 Agenda was the result of an extended process of international analysis that recognizes that global problems can only be solved through social solutions. The three pillars on which the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development is based on are social equity, economic growth, the environment. Going to the next slide. How will sustainable development goals be implemented? Implementation and success will rely on countries' own sustainable development policies, plans and programs and will be led by countries. The sustainable development goals will be a compass for aligning countries' plans with their global commitments. Nationally owned and country-led sustainable development strategies will require resource mobilization and financing strategies. All stakeholders, such as governments, civil society, the private sector and others, are expected to contribute to the realization of the new agenda. A revitalized global partnership at the global level is needed to support national efforts. This is recognized in the 2013 Agenda. 
multi-stakeholder partnerships have been recognized as an important component of the strategies that seek to mobilize all stakeholders around the new agenda. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number one, no poverty, aims to end poverty in all its forms. The strategy aims to reduce the number of citizens living in extreme and relative poverty in all its forms as per national definitions. The strategy seeks to reduce the number of people living below the poverty line to encourage participation in the labor market by those fit to work and to develop the system of social protection and assistance. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number two, zero hunger, aims to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. The strategy aims to develop a sustainable and competitive agri-food sector so as to improve quality of life in the rural environment and ensure living conditions like those in urban areas to encourage local and ecological production and to promote traditional and mountain products with added value. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number three, good health and well-being, aims to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. The strategy aims to reduce rates of maternal and infant mortality, lower the incidence of infectious and chronic diseases, and prevent and treat cases of substance abuse and mental illness. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number four, quality education, aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. The strategy aims to achieve the following, to ensure access by all children to equitable and quality preschool, primary and secondary education, leading to relevant and effective outcomes, to increase substantially the number of youth and adults with relevant skills to promote employment in decent jobs and entrepreneurships and to guarantee that every pupil gains the relevant skills to promote sustainable development. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number five, gender equality, aims to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number six, clean water and sanitation aims to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. The strategy aims to increase quality of life by developing water and sewage infrastructure and public services, thus bringing Romania into line with EU standards and requirements in terms of drinking water, wastewater and waste management and to increase the efficiency of water use in all sectors. Going to the next slide. Strategic goal number seven, affordable and clean energy, aims to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. The sustainable goal number eight, decent work and economic growth, aims to promote sustain, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. Going to the next slide. Strategic goal number nine, industry, innovation and infrastructure, aims to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. The strategic goal number 10, reduced inequalities, aims to reduce inequality within and among countries. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number 11, sustainable cities and communities, aims to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. The strategic goal number 12, responsible consumption and production, aims to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Going to the next slide. Strategic goal number 13, climate action, aims to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. The strategy aims to consolidate Romania's capacity for adaptation and resilience 
in order to combat the dangers associated with climate change and natural disasters by integrating measures to diminish and adapt to climate change and natural disasters, both in the form of strategies and national policies, and by planning for and increasing the level of education and awareness with respect to climate change. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number 14, life below water, aims to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. The strategy aims to support the prevention and reduction of marine pollution, the sustainable management and protection of marine ecosystems, the conservation of coastal areas and the practice of sustainable fishing. Going to the next slide. Strategy goal number 15, Life on Land, aims to protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. The aim of this strategy is to pursue the sustainable conservation and use of terrestrial ecosystems and the sustainable management of forests in order to combat desertification, to regenerate degraded land and soil, including land affected by desertification, drought and flooding, to develop green infrastructure, to conserve and protect wetlands, to ensure the conservation of mountain ecosystems, and support research in the field, to manage forests sustainably, to eliminate illegal logging, and clear feeling and to support the transition to a circular economy. Going to the next slide. The strategic goal number 16, peace, justice and strong institutions, aims to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. The strategic goal number 17, partnerships for the goals, aims to strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Going to the next slide. Subchapter 1.3, the role of food in sustainable development. The EU Farm to Fork strategy, adopted in May 2020, addresses comprehensively the challenges of sustainable food systems. It provides a roadmap for the sustainability to transition of our food system towards making European food the global standard for sustainability. As part of a holistic approach, the strategy also called on the food industry, retail and food service sectors to show the way toward increasing the availability and affordability of healthy, sustainable food options to improve the sustainability of the food system. To promote this, the Commission, together with all relevant stakeholders, designed an EU Code of Conduct on Responsible Food Business and Marketing Practices. Going to the next slide. What is a sustainable food system? A sustainable food system is a food system that delivers food security and nutrition for all in such a way that the economic, social and environmental basis to generate food security and nutrition for future generations are not compromised. This means that it is profitable throughout economic sustainability, it has broad-based benefits for society, social sustainability, it has a positive or neutral impact on the natural environment, environmental sustainability. Going to the next slide. Farm to Fork Strategy. The Farm to Fork Strategy aims to accelerate the transition to a sustainable food system that should have a neutral or positive environmental impact, help to mitigate climate change and adapt to its impact, reverse the loss of biodiversity, ensure food security, nutrition and public health, making sure that everyone has access to sufficient, safe, nutritious and sustainable food, preserve affordability of food while generating favorable economic returns, fostering competitiveness of the EU supply sector and promoting fair trade. Going to the next slide. A common aspirational path towards sustainable food systems. 
Whereas many European food business operators are actively engaged in the sustainability transition and have already made tangible progress to date in their individual capacity as well as in partnership with other economic and social actors, it is thought that a shift to sustainable food systems could bring further environmental, health and social benefits offer economic gains and ensure that the recovery from the COVID-19 crisis puts citizens and operators onto a sustainable path. This shift cannot take place without all major actors in the food system, including, but not limited to, the middle part of the European food supply chain, assuming a key responsibility and engaging in meaningful action in this process. Going to the next slide. What is needed to achieve a sustainable food system? In order to achieve a sustainable food system, synergistic combination of policies and actions is required. Promote sustainable intensification and or scale up agroecological approaches. Reduce food loss and waste while encouraging the reuse and recycling of unavoidable food waste. Stimulate dietary changes towards healthier, less resource intensive, for example, more plant-based diets. Improve the resilience and robustness of the food system in particular by diversification to cope with the shocks from the geopolitical developments and to adapt to the effects of the climate change. Increase the accountability and stewardship of producers and consumers on the environmental, economic, social and public health effects of the food system through, among others, participatory policy development and monitoring, increasing transparency, training education and improving labeling to better inform consumer choices. Going to the next slide. Framework for engagement on food sustainability. The Code of Conduct seeks to improve sustainability on three levels. In relation to food consumption patterns for healthy and sustainable diets, within internal process, operations and organization at the level of the actors in the middle part of the food chain, throughout the supply chain in a liaison with primary producers and other actors. Going to the next slide. The general framework of aspirational objectives and targets sets out a common vision for the EU food chain and other actors to help achieve sustainable food systems. Aspirational Objective 1. Healthy, balanced and sustainable diets for all the European consumers, thereby contributing to reversing malnutrition and diet-related non-communicable diseases in the EU reducing the environmental footprint of food consumption by 2030. This aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to international goals as formulated by the UN Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 2, Zero Hunger, SDG 3, Good Health and Well-Being, SDG 4, Quality Education, SDG 12, Sustainable Production and Consumption, SDG 13 Climate Action, SDG 14 Marine Protection, SDG 15 Biodiversity and the Paris Climate Agreement, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Aspirational Objective 2. Prevention and reduction of food loss and waste at consumer level within internal operations and across value chains. This cross-cutting aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 2, Zero Hunger, SDG 6, Clean Water and Sanitation, SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy, SDG 9, Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure, SDG 12, Sustainable Production and Consumption, SDG 13, Climate Action, SDG 14, Marine Protection, SDG 15, Biodiversity, SDG 17, Partnerships, and the Paris Climate Agreement, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Aspirational Objective 3, a climate-neutral food chain in Europe by 2015. The aspirational objective is inspired by, and directly and indirectly, linked to international goals as formulated by the Paris Climate Agreement and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs No. 6, 
clean water and sanitation, 7. Affordable and clean energy, SDG 12. Sustainable production and consumption, SDG 13. Climate action, SDG 14. Marine protection, SDG 15. Biodiversity, SDG 17. Partnerships, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Aspirational Objective 4. An optimized circular and resource efficient food chain in Europe. The aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to international goals as formulated by the UN Nations Sustainable Development Goals number 6 Clean Water and Sanitation, SDG 7 Affordable and Clean Energy, SDG 9 Industry Innovation and Infrastructure, SDG 12 Sustainable Production and Consumption, SDG 13 Climate Action, SDG 14 Marine Protection, SDG 15 Biodiversity, SDG 17 Partnership, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Operational Objective 5 Sustain, Inclusive and Sustainable Economic Growth, Employment and Decent Work for All. The aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to international goals as formulated by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals number 1 no poverty number 3 health and well-being number 4 quality education number 5 gender equality number 6 clean water and sanitation number 7 affordable and clean energy number 8 decent work and economic growth Number 9. Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure. Number 10. Reduced Inequalities. Number 12. Sustainable Production and Consumption. Number 13. Climate Action. Number 14. Marine Protection. Number 15. Biodiversity. Number 17. Partnerships. And the Paris Climate Agreement, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Operational Objective 6. Sustainable value creation in the European food supply chain through partnership. The aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to international goals as formulated by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Number one, no poverty. Number two, ending hunger. Number three, health and well-being. Number four, quality education. Number seven, affordable and clean energy. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. Nine, industry, innovation and infrastructure. Ten, reduced inequalities. Twelve, sustainable production and consumption. Thirteen, climate action. Fourteen, marine protection. Fifteen, biodiversity. Seventeen, partnerships. And the Paris Climate Agreement, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Aspirational Objective 7. Sustainable sourcing in food supply chains. The aspirational objective is inspired by and directly and indirectly linked to the international goals as formulated by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Number one, no poverty. Number two, zero hunger. Four, quality education. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Ten, reduced inequalities. Twelve, sustainable production and consumption. 13. Climate Action, 14. Marine Protection, 15. Biodiversity, 17. Partnerships and Paris Climate Agreement, amongst others. Going to the next slide. Sustainable food systems are interconnected and represent the full agri-value chain from pre-production and production to supply chains and consumption. Going to the next slide. Challenges and opportunities in building sustainable food system based on different stages. Pre-production includes genetic resources improvement, agricultural practices, agricultural inputs. Production includes growing, harvesting and food loss management. The supply chain includes processing, storage, transport, wholesaling or retailing and marketing access. The consumption stage includes cooking, eating and food waste management. Going to the next slide, the pre-production stage. The sustainability of a food system begins well before a crop is grown or an animal raised. This pre-production stage includes how genetic resources are conserved and used to improve the quality and productivity of domesticated crops and livestock for the future. 
It also includes innovations in agricultural inputs, such as fertilizer or crop protection products. This can help to boost yields and incomes while preventing further land from being converted for cultivation. It also includes advances in agricultural practices themselves to ensure that farmers can continue to thrive in the face of climate change and other increasingly unpredictable conditions. Going to the next slide. Production stage. In the production stage, farmers must contend with the myriad challenges involved in growing and harvesting, including pests and disease, severe and unpredictable weather, food loss management, and fluctuating market conditions. Under the current projections, 60% more food will be needed by 2050, yet current production efforts are falling short of this target and global hunger levels are on the rise again after decades of progress. This is in addition to the 2 billion people already suffering from malnutrition globally today. Going to the next slide. Supply chain stage. The supply chain stage refers to the steps taken to deliver food from the farmer to the consumer. Transforming into sellable goods, these products can be processed, packaged and stored before eventually being transported to market. Post-harvest food loss is an especially important issue across the developing world, where the infrastructure, energy grids and transport system are often poor or missing. In these countries, more than 40% of food losses occur post-harvest and during processing. Going to the next slide. The consumption stage. A food system does not only capture how something is grown, it also includes how a food is cooked, eaten and disposed by of consumers. During this consumption stage, each of us makes a series of decisions which have broader implications to our food and nutrition security, the well-being of our communities and to the wider environment and natural resource base. Some high-income countries spend less than 10% of income on buying food while others, mostly in Africa and Asia, spend more than 40%. Likewise, while some countries are facing obesity epidemics, others suffer from the impacts of undernutrition. Going to the next slide. Food and nutrition security. Governments, businesses, scientists and civil society groups must focus their attention on the source of our food security. Productivity levels in most developing countries have to be raised exponentially while considering environmental sustainability. Policies encouraging investment in developing countries' agricultural sectors should be supported. Governments should invest in their agricultural sectors and devise long-term agricultural development strategies supporting the development of local agricultural markets and farmers' ability to answer market demands. Women farmers should become specially targeted recipients because of their vital roles in the agricultural workforce, household food procurement and preparation and family unit support. Local production should also be stimulated by providing farmers with the technology, the knowledge and the adequate financial services they need. Going to the next slide. Increasing resiliency of food system through agriculture. Investments align with the strategic goal aim to increase the resilience of agricultural and food system through improved viability of business, diversification of product lines and technical support. Resilient food system can withstand short and long term shocks and stressors such as natural disasters and extreme weather events. They are described as diverse, integrated, self-regulating, adaptive, inclusive and equitable. Examples of food system resilience, including food sovereignty, are found globally, often led by civil society and indigenous people. These systems guarantee and protect people's space, ability and right to define their own models of food production, distribution and consumption. Food system resilience begins by supporting sustainable farming businesses that prioritize both environmental and human health. Going to the next slide. 
investments that aim to improve food system resilience through sustainable agriculture can develop and finance agricultural technologies that support climate resilient practices, such as improved soil health, efficient water use and increased water holding capacity, or that manage and promote agricultural diversity on farms and in markets, finance food production, infrastructure and businesses along the value chain, including processing facilities and transport innovations in regional markets in order to connect sustainable agricultural products to markets, purchase or assist in purchasing farmland and farming operations with an emphasis on sustainable practices, regional markets and social equity and justice, create new investment mechanism including appropriate technical assistance to fund sustainable farms and food businesses to improve farm viability. Going to the next slide. Terms of these investments could include increased profitability and viability of micro, small and mid-scale sustainable farming and food businesses in the value chain, improved composing and circular economy systems, decreased food waste, diversification of production and supply chains, including sources from and supplying to local and regional supply chains, increased viability of food-focused micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, and less corporate consolidation, increased sustainability of markets and businesses through diversification of revenue streams, transparency in production and businesses practices, increased food sovereignty and food security, and increased funding of locally appropriate technical support and services for sustainable agriculture. Going to the next slide. Subchapter 1.4, taking part in sustainable development. Which actors are involved? The operators between the farm and the fork are the food processors, the food service operators, and the retailers. Going to the next slide. Why the actors are involved. These actors shape the market and influence consumers' dietary choices through the types and nutritional composition of the food they produce, their choice of suppliers, production methods and packaging, transport, merchandising and marketing practices. While many of the actors in these categories have undertaken important steps to strengthen the sustainability of our food systems, further action is necessary. As these middle of the food chain actors do not act in isolation, the other stakeholders in the wider food system can be also involved in developing the code of conduct considering the interlinkages within the agri-food system and across different sectors. Going to the next slide. Conclusions. Securing innovation of food system in the wake of pandemic has been highlighted in its importance for avoiding a widening of technology and capacity gaps between countries. However, narrowly focused innovation can enable progress towards one objective while hindering or undermining progress towards another. Hence, impact pathways of innovations should be considered across entire food systems so that synergies and trade-offs between economic, social and environmental objectives can be identified and managed and processes be put in place that facilitate the adoption of suitable innovative technologies and practices by society. Science can help in charting the right course forward, supporting efforts to maximize synergies and minimize trade-offs between the multiple objectives that need to be served by the food system. However, food system transformation will ultimately hinge on collective value judgments, commitment and political will to enable the required sustainability transitions. The transformation needs to be based on open access to information, transparent communication, trust in governments, and adequate recognition and support of societal needs. Subchapter 1.5 Using international databases for articles in getting to know the concept of sustainable food business. 
knowing the importance of a topic you find interesting is difficult, even in the research or academic domain. In order to do that, using the international databases for research articles may come in handy, as they offer information regarding the evolution of a topic since the beginning of the database. Such databases are Web of Science, Scopus, ProQuest, CEOL, and so on. Accessing these databases should be provided by the university or research center or library you are affiliated with. For example, in the Bucharest University of Economic Studies, we use www.eInformation.ro and our university emails to log in. Going to the next slide. New students, professors or research fellows may create an account as soon as they receive their institutional affiliation accounts. Going to the next slide. After logging in to your account, you should click Profil Institutional or Institutional Profile that redirects you to all the databases that your institution has a subscription for. Scroll down to the new page and find Web of Science. You can see on yellow Profil Institutional in the picture. Going to the next slide. Web of Science is the database we are using for this exercise. It is the most known database for scientific publications. Click Access as a or Access and let's get started. Going to the next slide. By clicking Access, the Web of Science database opens up and we can browse through its content. We may choose all fields as the default setting or select a specific field such as title, publisher, author, or something else. In the search field, we should write the word or phrase we are interested in. In this case, type sustainable food business. We may use quotation marks to search for the exact phrase and or or as connectors for multiple search phrases. You can see in the picture the search bar and the fields you can choose from. Going to the next slide. The number of papers that refer to sustainable food business is 4,677. It would be difficult to read even the abstract for each one. Luckily, the database offers the possibility to see if the topic is of current interest or if it faded away at some point. We click Analyze Results and a new page opens up. On the left side, we may find a series of filters for our search if we want to see only the articles published in a specific year or maybe only the highly cited papers or the open access papers. Going to the next slide. By clicking Analyze Results, the new page that opens offers us the possibility to see the evolution of the topic we are studying, in this case, sustainable food business. In the first purple rectangle, we may choose the category we want to sort the papers by, and we are going to start with the publication years. We may choose also the type of sorting, results count or date, the number of papers to be shown and the minimum record count. Below, we choose the type of chart and the number of items in the chart. In this case, we choose a bar chart with at least 20 years by results count. We may see that the topic has a significantly increasing evolution 
from less than 10 papers in 2002 to more than 800 papers in 2020. Going more in depth with this topic is, therefore, a good idea. Going to the next slide. Another interesting category is the one of Web of Science categories, referring to the general areas of research that these papers fall under. This type of chart is more expressive if we want to see the weight of a specific element and it is known as a tree map chart. Of course, we can download the chart and use it for our own paper as long as we cite the source. We may see that the categories with the highest weight, the highest number of papers, are the environmental related ones, being followed by the business and economics related ones, as the topic we sought is at the intersection of the two main research areas. Nevertheless, other interesting papers may be found in other research areas as the topic is multidisciplinary. Going to the next slide. As for the category of research areas, it is similar to the Web of Science categorization, yet it is more general. We may see that the most important research areas that engulf the sustainable food business domain are environmental sciences ecology, business economics, and science technology other topics, being followed by agriculture, engineering, and food science technology. This means a specialization of the papers in this field from the general ones to the more precise research areas due to the higher interest in sustainability. Going to the next slide. The category of authors points out the most prolific researchers on the sustainable food business topic. What is important in this case is to notice the fact that the first 20 authors have at least 16 papers published on this topic. This means more than one thing. First, now we know who do we want to read in order to find out the state of the art in this field. Second, we know who to cite and make correlations within our paper if we are interested in conducting a new research in this field. In this case, Stancho Silvius is the author with the highest number of papers in this field. We should also be aware that the highest number of papers does not mean these papers are the most important in the field. We will find those later in the presentation. Going to the next slide. We can also find in which countries this topic is of interest for the researchers. We may see that most of the papers considering sustainable food business are published in the USA, followed by England and the People's Republic of China. The high number of researchers given by the high population of these countries makes them usually first in most of the research areas. Nevertheless, the topic is of interest all around the world from the European countries to Australia, Asia, or South America. Going to the next slide. As the English is the most spoken language in international contexts, the fact that most of the research papers in Web of Science are in English is no surprise. We would not want to write a paper that can only be understood by a small proportion of the world's population. Yet, some papers are written in both national language and English or only in national language. Going to the next slide. The category of affiliations shows us where do the researchers that publish in this field come from. This is important not only as an additional information, but we may find 
that these universities or research centers are engaged in research projects in the field that we are interested in and may offer classes or webinars for the interested public. Also, for researchers and academics, this may be a strong point when choosing to participate in a project or take a job at one institution. In this case, the Netherlands Vanigen University, followed by the Romanian Bucharest University of Economic Studies and the international organization CGIAR, are the first three institutions to which researchers are affiliated with. Going to the next slide. As each journal has a specific interest area where you can find or even publish papers in the field of sustainable food business is important. The most important journal in this case is sustainability, followed by Journal of Cleaner Production and British Food Journal. These three journals have a multidisciplinary approach meaning that the papers we may find in them are presenting different angles from the technical to the economic one. Going to the next slide. Of course, each journal belongs to a publisher and each publisher may have more than one journal to cover several research areas. Each publisher has different objectives and requests for the papers they are publishing. In this case, the most important publishers are the first six one in the picture, starting with Elsevier. Going to the next slide. The category of funding agencies is particularly important. This may tell us if the topic is a priority in research at international level Given the fact that there are multiple funding agencies for the research papers in the sustainable food business area, both international and national, we may consider that the interest in developing this topic through solutions, new technologies and economic aspects is of great interest. The EU Commission is the first funding agency interested in the topic. Going to the next slide. Before being published in a journal, a paper is first debated in a conference. The feedback from the peers contributes to developing the paper and make it suitable for a journal. The conferences in which this topic is a hot potato are mostly IBIMA and BASIC. But interesting ideas may emerge in all kinds of conferences, small or large. Going to the next slide. After finishing with analyzing the results, we may go back to the initial page by clicking back to search results on the top of the page. Going to the next slide. On the initial page, by clicking the filter highly cited, we keep only those papers that are cornerstones in the field of interest. In this case, there are 85 papers which should be of highest interest when we first want to find out about the importance of the sustainable food business domain. Going to the next slide. Self-activity. Use the search phrase food sustainability and make a presentation of the evolution of publications considering publishing years, research areas, authors, countries, affiliations, and which is the most cited paper in this field.